Namaste. I welcome you all to the 58th session of Guru Bodha. I cordially welcome Dr. M. B. Guraja sir, and I cordially welcome Dr. Ragram sir to this session also. I dedicate this and all of my works at the holy feet of Dr. H. Chandrasekhar Rudpa. This class is made live uh, to all the weekly class subscribers. Uh, if you have not done that, uh, e go to easyairvedha.com slash video dash classes. Starting with the class today, in the last class, uh, we discussed all the medicines related with uh, K K treatment for the case of uh, deep vein thrombosis uh, with precipitating venous ulcers uh, treated by Dr. Guraja sir. But we did not touch base upon the external applications that were used. Uh, Guraja sir, can you please uh, explain Pancha Valkala Lepa that you had mentioned. But a bit of your uh, Dravagana precious knowledge on Pancha Valkala and why you are using it, which company, etc. Please, sir. Pancha Valkala, the name itself suggests they are all the five barks from the peculiar five group of drugs like uh, Udumbara, Ashwatha, Plaksha, Parisha, and these things. And they are all uh, potent Kashayarasa Dravyas and they, could, they have a special ability to stop the oozing. So whenever there is some oozing is there, then in that area, if you apply this Panchavalkala Kwatha or Panchavalkala powder or Panchavalkala Lepa in the form of the Lepa or it may be even ointment is applied, then it is going to reduce the oozing in from that area and thereby when there is any wound, if oozing stops or reduces, it starts healing. Until unless if there is a oozing, it won't heal. So that's the reason we use particularly for external application. Panchavalkala Lepa and uh, Univa Medica comes with the Panchavalkala Lepa in the form of ointment. So that uh, I have used in this case and that will be giving you sufficient uh, you know, a smoothening effect as well as reduces the oozing and also it's a very good uh, wound healer. Panchavalkala because of its Kashaya Rasa and Tikta Rasa, this is going to help in uh, bringing the, uh, the anatomical discontinuation which was there happened in the case of Vrana and definitely that will be helpful issue building up and of course uh, we know that Kashaya Rasa is a Pradhana in uh, Pancha Mahabhuta concept if you take it in the, that sense there is a Prithvi also very dominantly present in um, the, the, the origin of uh, is very much important in the tissue building uh, particularly in case of ulcers so with all these uh, concepts we can use it and uh, the, evidently the result is seen and which suggests the thing what our acharyas have said regarding the panchaval color and its utility it suits it probably this cream can be used uh, especially for people with uh, say, di diabetes or bleeding tendency so it is very natural while cutting nails etc if there is a bleed it can be the ready-made is a ready-made ointment which can be used as a styptic to reduce the bleeding tendency Definitely, to reduce the bleeding tendency, this can be used. But uh, as you suggested that uh, while nail cutter and doing all those things, devil things, if there is any little bit of bleeding occurs, that will automatically stops by natural process of uh, glutenin uh, fibrinogen activity, and uh, bleeding process stops uh, naturally. The clotting occurs. But those who have a tendency to bleed more. And those places which are under excessive pressure, like in a deep vein thrombosis or DVT or venous insufficiency or atherosclerotic type of things, there the pressure is there. We are unable to move the blood in a right direction. Then there is a chances of continuous oozing out. Or even uh, diseases like uh, skin conditions like uh, weeping eczema, uh, where there is a wet eczema, which is uh, we can be co correlated with the vicharchika of Ayurveda, where there is a continuous oozing. In such type of conditions. Definitely the Panchavalkala will help and it may be any wound, it may be static dermatitis leading to a venous ulcer or a diabetic foot ulcer, it may be. So in all those conditions, this can be used. Thank you, sir. And coming to the Panchavalkala. Bed source is another condition, so where uh, this can be effectively used. Panchavalkala ointment can be used. Bed source and Panchavalkala Kashaya Dhara in infected wounds, Dushtavrana is uh, really helpful. I personally use that. Either Kashaya Dara or uh, Kashaya Siddha Kshira. So Kshira Dara prepared with Panchavalkala. Nalpamaradi also works in a similar way. Uh, Shatodauta Gruta ointment is another one which helps in this condition. You know, people who are bedridden for longer time, Panchavalkala Churna can be at least made and used as a powder on their back. So that Absolutely. It can be used as a sprinkle also. Like and be sprinkled so ointments can be applied so definitely 
of course with uh, some training not to be in a particular position to keep on slapping the positions of the patient i think panchavalkala and nalpamaradi are always the best choices in this condition and uh, in in a wound when we are doing kashaya dhara for example ideally how many minutes it's continued yeah so if it is uh, more over stanika dhara like venous ulcers and other things occurring in the lower uh, uh, limbs so i even recommend the foot dip so like uh, avagaha so pada avagaha or uh, dipping the foot into the uh warm kashaya so so that so and care should be taken that it should be wiped off later ointment so what i practice is first a kashaya dara and then uh, application of the ointment on on a dry surface so that that will be adding to the effect of uh, the healing of uh, these wounds uh dara can be done roughly around uh, 20 minutes to 30 minutes it can be done continuously no issues at all even the dip can be given for around 20 minutes so even it can be given twice uh, twice a day if it is possible if they can do it at home so it is an easy remedy and uh, just while watching tv or doing something some so anyhow they will be sitting for uh, some three minutes they can spare so prepare the kashaya dip so when patient is preparing the medicine all by themselves that is also that will also add to the healing so the observance is there the confidence will grow so once the wound starts healing they will start continuously practicing that so ideally 20 minutes to 30 minutes 30 35 minutes should be the ideal time it can be extended also so if we are doing the sarvanga dara like uh, so we can continue it so like uh, lesions on uh, limbs so like both limbs so we can take 15 minutes each for each limb uh, doing the dara or simultaneously if it is done so by two masseurs on either side so that can be uh, continued for 20 25 minutes to 30 minutes can be done so if if you are to consider pantal pantavalkala versus trifala for example external application uh, do you see both of them acting in a similar way or there are some specific conditions in which one is better than the other. Panchavalkala versus Trifala. One important thing we need to understand is when we are putting uh, them as a dusting powder, something like that, our powder or the Panchavalkala or the maybe Trifala, it should be very, very, very fine. Something like 120 mesh pass it through. Such type of very fine powder it should be. Otherwise, because it's a Panchavalkala, is all the material is from the bark, basically. So it will be more fibrous in nature. So then uh, actually if you don't uh, make it very fine powder, then putting a little bit rough powder may instead of causing a uh, positive thing out of this uh, treatment may even become a counterproductive, causes a damage or it becomes in the way of uh, healing. So that needs to be taken care of. When these things are applied in the form of ointment, okay, it is an entirely different issue, then there will be no such problems that can be done but wherever any wound or a sore it is oozing continuously and it is not healing then the drug of choice for my concern is that that will be towards panchavalkala because panchavalkala is more dominant because of its potent kashaya rasa when compared to trifala trifala is very good for eye wash or buccal cavity if you are for the gargle or wash but when it comes to external wounds like uh, diabetic foot ulcer or bed sore and all those things trifala is next choice the first choice should be or would be um, panchavalkala because panchavalkala has a better capacity to nullify the oozing or reduce the oozing and once oozing reduces automatically healing takes fast. So Panchavalkala is a better uh, choice in the, those conditions. We can, we can also consider Trifala as a poor man's uh, Panchavalkala. Like many people tell that Panchavalkala is not easily available for us. We have searched a lot. So Trifala is easily available, like just like Godambi and uh, Kadlakai. So in Kannada, we tell, no? So poor man's, uh, uh, this cashew nut is the ground nut. So just like that, uh, non-availability of uh, Panchavalkala, so many times I have asked the patient to use Trifala is available, sir. Okay, use it for time being as you search or uh, till we make it available to you. So that can be used as a handy one. Trifala is available everywhere. So so once Panchavalkala is available, as Guraja sir said, uh, in uh, complicated conditions, even in the infected conditions, and when there is oozing, things not responding to other medications, Panchavalkala is the best uh, which can be used in the clinical practice. Uh, just, just searching for Panchavalkala in the Google, there is this hmm. Panchavalkala Kwata Churna fine powder is, is a bit of a problem. Panchavalkala 30 capsules is also available. Same, Univa Medica makes that. In which conditions would we, should we be using it 
orally panchavarkala capsule it can be used in case of uh, gastric ulcers uh, duodenal ulcer in those type of conditions we can use it but while considering this for the internal use i usually not recommend in these type of cases where there is circulatory defects are there yeah, it, it is a internal use i don't recommend yes, sir. so it's a tricky situation like externally there is oozing which needs to be stopped but internally there is blood circulation problem which requires a different set of uh, treatments that we discussed in the last class numbness which doshas cause it and what is the path pathology behind it should we be considering the underlying disease which is causing numbness in deciding like line of treatment etc raghuram sir do you have any thoughts on this please yeah so numbness so this is an interesting question as well so numbness as you said uh, it may be primary so where there be there may be the dosha variations or secondary to some disease which is already present now uh, when we say numbness where it is present and what is numbness actually so numbness has many meanings numbness in ayurveda it is called as supti or swapa these two words are used supti or swapa so these two uh, conditions supti in second to sleep temporary sleep or a permanent sleep we can call it as a supti so like uh, the part of the skin or the muscle or the soft tissue is sleeping it is not responding so like after taking some tranquilizer or uh, sedative it has gone for a sleep so now we need to get it out of the sleep so that is the basic thing here numb numb is a word used for both physical and mental condition here i think uh, i guess uh, it is more over physical condition which we will be discussing so numbness means uh, able to think unable to feel unable to react something called, like uh, as in dead or insensitive we can call it as which dosha is causing this we need to see generally if we are seeing numbness to be caused in the skin skin is one of uh, the sthana for vata one of the sthana for vata so should we consider vata increase or vata decrease because sarshan indriya is the sthana for vata here when we are seeing at the pathology what is causing uh, the swapa or uh, supti two questions are right supti means less so the sparsha gnana or the tactile sensation the touch sensation is provided by vata in a balanced condition generally our uh, intelligence goes to tell that when there is vata decrease probably the sensation will come down that is if there is vata kshaya the touch sensations may come down and there may be numbness so due to the lack of electric activity in the skin the skin is not able to appreciate the phenomena of touch so this is the general thinking which uh, takes us but can vata kshaya cause numbness vata kshaya can cause numbness in an indirect way but not in a direct way because we know that as per the rules of ayurveda kshaya cannot cause any symptoms it can only cause some imbalances either individual imbalance of vata or mutual imbalance with pitta and kapha so here when there is vata kshaya what we will take two scenarios two scenarios and see what happens in vata decrease and vata increase vata decrease directly cannot cause numbness that is for sure okay so but vata decrease necessarily will cause imbalance in kapha and pitta mainly when there is vata kshaya there is kapha vruddhi most of the times there may be pitta vruddhi also we have a condition called as kapha vruta vyana kapha vruta vyana in that one of the symptoms is gati sanga gati sanga means uh, obstruction to the movements or the movements are not proper so here when we see numb numb also as i already said unable to think unable to feel unable to react dead insensitive insensible so many things the reaction is a movement reaction is a movement so in kafavrta vyana when there is gati sanga there there is lack of movements or deficit movements that means the reaction is not there we are going into a deeper layer than skin it may be skin muscles or any soft tissues unable to respond so vata kshaya causing kapha vruddhi and that kapha enveloping the vyana vata or obstruction obstructing the function of vyana vata vyana vata is that vata which is circulating all through the body so when kapha is blocking the vyana vata what happens there is gati sanga so gati sanga can be taken as a form of numbness form of numbness similarly when we go to a condition called as pitta vruta vyana pitta vruta vyana where pitta is obstructing the vyana this time it's not the kapha here there are symptoms like daha sarvanga klama gatra vikshepa gatra sanga and santapa vedana 
Gatravikshepa, all these things. So here also we have Gatravikshepa and Gatra Sangha. It is there, like a feeling of obstruction or a particular part or parts of the body are dead. So here, a feeling of, a, even in the modern context when we see numbness is also associated to other word called as burning or pins and needles in the body. So, Kapha Vruta Vyana and Pitta Vruta Vyana can be considered as the pathological manifestations of numbness. Now I'll go to the other concept. Can Vata Vruddhi cause numbness? Absolutely yes. So this is a case where uh, Vata increase also increase will cause numbness more than vata kshaya vata kshaya can indirectly cause uh, uh, numbness by meddling with the balance of kapha and pitta and when kapha and pitta are uh, causing avarna of vyana vata it can cause numbness now when we come to vata aggravation sukta twacham so there is a word used as sukta twacham that uh, clearly indicates sleeping skin which also means numbness or absence of sensation in the skin and it is said to be a complication or a symptom of Vata Vyadi. It is a so complication of Sushrula Vata Vyadi. So Gatra Suptata is a symptom of Vata Vyadi according to Charaka. When we go to Charaka Chikitsa chapter 28 and refer through the symptoms of uh, Var Vruddhi or Var Vyadi, 28 chapter is Vata Vyadi. Clearly we get a word called as Gatra Suptata. So the body is sleeping. So here it can be seen in our deeper tissues also. We get one more condition called as Prana Vruta Vata. So Prana Vruta uh, vata Lakshanas. So, in this condition, particularly, Pranavruta Vyana, I, I think, uh, just let, let me check and see. In Pranavruta Vyana, I think so. So, in, in that, we get a symptom called as Sarvendriyanam Shunyata. Sarva Indriyanam Shunyata. So, that means a numbness or a zero zone in almost all the Indriyas. When it is all the Indriyas, we will also take Tok also as an Indriya. Okay. So that uh, is about the avarna. So here we can see so many conditions, vata kshaya indirectly causing kafavruta, va, uh, kafavruta uh, vyana, pittavruta vyana, vata vruddhi, vata prakopa or uh, vata vyadi itself can cause this particular condition. And finally, swapa, sramsa vyasa veda swapa sada ruktoda vedanam. Swapa is a word used in as a symptom of vata prakopa. In vata prakopa lakshanas, we can find the word swapa so nowhere in uh, vata kshaya lakshanas swapa or uh, supti has been mentioned but most references we get is that of the vata uh, vruddhi or vata prakopa here vata vruddhi vata prakopa and vata avarna either by kapha or by pitta or by itself the subtypes of vata causing avarna of each other and indriya brahmsha another word i want to tell before finishing indriya brahmsha is mentioned in Vata Vruddhi Lakshanas. Indriya Brahmsha is a word used in Vata Vruddhi Lakshanas. Brahmsha is a deviation from the normal activity. In case of skin, it may be the touch sensation. Loss of sensation of all the sense organs includes are included in Indriya Brahmsha. Here we can consider as Tvak Indriya or Sparshan Indriya Brahmsha. Again, a symptom of Vata Vruddhi Lakshanas. So these are the different types of pathological manifestations which can cause supti or swapa so which we can translate it to numbness again finally numb also when we go to the modern uh, this one translations of numbness numbness also is given as unable to think unable to think so here increase of uh, tamasika pravritya or the tamasika guna or the decrease of sattvika guna or the manas being afflicted by different doshas we can consider so that is a big topic to discuss numbness is a term which is used for physical conditions and also the mental conditions so moreover uh, i have detailed about uh, the pathology of the physical conditions we should not be skipping uh, the numbness the word numb associated uh, with the thinking process or the mind process uh, thank, thank you there so <clears throat> another unique feature that you know, whenever an organ uh, is afflicted by say vata dosha and it leads to depletion of its action usually there will be simultaneous eruption let's say of other symptoms like how uh, you know the you know numbness often sometimes leads to or associated with a burning sensation or vedana that we come across pain uh, even in case of like a uh, alzheimer's disease or dementia patients in the elderly they also by definition again vata dosha has increased in the 
brain leading to depleted brain activity and memory uh, or complete absence of memory. So we would think that all the other functions are going down and they'll simply be sitting in one place uh, without their memory. But more often than that, aggression, anger outbursts are also seen. So when one function is, one proper function of an organ is decreased, some other unwanted symptoms also come up. Absolutely. So I want a small, I want to give a small clarification there, uh, Dr. Hebbar. So yes, uh, I was right. It is Pranavurta Vyana itself. I'll just read out the quote of Pranavurta Vyana. Uh, so for numbness so, or the reference here, Sarvendriyanam Shunyatvam and rightly so the points mentioned by you right now. In the continuation of the sloka, we get it. Sarvendriyanam Shunyatvam Gnatva Smruti Balakshayam Gnatva Smruti Balakshayam Vyane Pranavurte Lingam Karma Tatra Urdva Jatrukam. The treatment is also the Urdva Jatru process, like Masya and other things should be done as a treatment. Master Charaka tells. So, this is a reference uh, from Charaka Chikitsa chapter 28, shloka number 202, 202. So, that is a reference for those who are interested. Sarvendriyanam Shunyatvam Gnatva Smruti, smruti Balakshayam. Smruti, smruti Kshaya Balakshaya is also there here. Vyane Prana Urte. Prana Urta Vyana condition here. Lingam Karma Tatra. Urva Jatrukam. Urva Jatruja uh, procedure should be done, including Nasya and other things uh, shall be done as the treatment for this particular condition. So here we can see the Smruti, Smruti Kshaya is also there, the Balakshaya is also there. Balakshaya is mainly due to the uh, Vana Vata being included and also the Prana Vata being included in this particular uh, condition. So that is a reference for uh, uh, Ramdas, uh, 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 Prana Vata uh, Coming to what, what should be the light of treatment? in case of numbness as a standard standard symptom or when it is there with other uh, other diseases involved again uh, again it goes according to the what what is the pathology behind it just now as i said if it is kapha uh, urta so more kapha symptoms are seen and then numbness is there so the treatment should be given for the avaraka like kapha uh, predominantly and then vatanulomana chikitsa should be done similar is the case with pitta urta vata conditions where virajana can be the first line of treatment and then we will go to address uh, so virajana is both the treatment for pitta and uh, vata we know so like a snikta virajana can be given in that particular condition so we need to see the condition which is causing the uh, numbness here in this particular condition whether it is a part of vata vari as uh, you rightly start, uh, started your question whether it is a secondary so if it is a part and parcel of vata vari like pakshagata or something the ideal treatment of that particular condition vyadi pratyanika chikitsa or the disease specific treatment will be the treatment for the symptom of the disease also if uh, uh, swapa or uh, supti is one of the symptoms of vata vari we need not address it separately treating the vata vari itself will take care of all the other uh, symptoms so swapa also will be taken uh, care of again it depends on uh, what is the length of the disease so the chronicity of the disease is very important here vata vari when it runs a chronic course all symptoms will become very difficult to handle it can only be managed from uh, getting even worse so mild to moderate uh, relief we can give mainly use of uh, the taila taila press bruta as yamaka as external and internal therapies and finding out the true reason the exact reason for the supti or swapa will be the key here so whether it is a part of avarna whether it is a part of uh, vata vyadi or just a vata vyadi symptom or a temporary symptom which has been manifested manifested at the physical level mental level both or first the person is suffering from psychological condition and then the swapa has occurred so is it like a hysteric condition or a mental condition where the person is feeling though there is no swapa the person is explaining the swapa there are some tests uh, with some pins and other things and also the nerve conduction tests need, need to be done to get a clarification according to that we can go uh, with the treatment plan uh, thank you sir uh, coming to uh, guru sir uh, if a patient uh, presents you with numbness and in which and all ways you start thinking and uh, you know uh, also uh, how to solve this that problem in terms of it's only in the oral medicine. See, as far well as uh, understanding of uh, numbness, usually when a patient approaches me with these type of things, and uh, at large, what I observed is numbness is due to vata. Something has gone wrong with the vata, whether it may be due to vata vruddhi, or it may be due to avarana, or it may be due to proportionately 
other lakshana i mean other doshas have become strong when compared to vata by blocking by some other way so like that there may be many reasons for example usually the patient comes with the complaining of numbness the most of them in the lower limbs particularly when there is a typically diabetic neuropathy so such type of uh, history will be there then many a times with uh, cervical uh, spondylosis there will be people complaining of numbness or paining uh, sensations or something like that in the hands so depending upon these type of narrations and understanding i will go through each and every step or maybe sometimes even the post herpetic herpetic neuralgia the patient may even sometimes say in that condition is a mild one then there will be numbness and itching sensation somewhere down the places where it has previously the lesions were there so such type of uh, narrations will be there so based on the such narrations whether it is a diabetic neuropathy or it may be because due to a lumbar thing or it may be due to cervical nerves so wherever it is whatever it is to ultimately it comes lands on vata territory so typically vata hara chikitsa or vata shamana chikitsa needs to be done so here uh, selection of the drug for this condition depends on the intensity of the disease and the chronicity of the disease and supported by some imaging techniques suggesting that how much compression on the narrow roots everything is there so once these areas are cleared then we can plan a treatment whether we have to go for a matra basti whether we have to go for the total basti or it may go for an abhyanga or even even go for a kati basti or even griva basti whatever it may be depending upon the condition we can go ahead with that and internally all vatahara dravyas in the form of kashayas gugudus and even the uh, some oils like shirabala or mahanarayana even to danvantram to some extent not one something like that so the such type of drug selection would be there if it is somewhere patient has uh, loss of uh, body tissues there is a kshaya and also complaining of these things then i will be selecting maha masha taila over there for the purpose or even i can give some rasayana dravyas to overcome the tissue loss so something like that the planning can be done according to the conditions whatever it is and of course in these cases if it is a patient is not having sufficient agni bala then i will try to give it to 3 days or 7 days some agni vardhana chikitsa like trikatu or chitrakadi something like that so it, it can be increased or even sometimes uh, we may not to improve the condition even hingvastaka churna with sukumara grita with such type of combinations it definitely depend upon the conditions that can be done so once that agni is improved amapachana has started then locally ushnata needs to be given snidhata needs to be given and that we are planning through the form of either um, basti or kati basti or something like that or even uh, griva basti or even kasheluka basti or something like that so then accordingly the selection of oils and this then followed by it may be um, simple uh, bashpa sweda or it may be nadi sweda or something or padrapunda putali sweda something like that if the patient is having a pinning sensation and these are things then we try to do it with a simple uh, with a low uh, type of um, uh, ushnata in that madhyama pramana or alpa pramana ushnata if it is a very clearly strong uh, pain condition and there is a numbness associated with that and uh, numbness is very typical then we need to go for an intense heat or a comparatively better tolerable heat so like that the combination according everything needs to be customized depending upon the condition thank you that sir and uh, uh, going uh, with the questions here what should we be prescribing for burning sensation sores due to uh, vitamin b b12 deficiency in vegetarians uh, again which, there is there are no vegan options of vitamin b12 available do you prefer going the vitamin b12 way gurudas usually in that conditions i will ask them to take vitamin b12 straight away unnecessarily i don't want to think but if they are interested to go for a vegan way then i suggest them to consume the certain foods like cereals and pulses in particularly and even for the green vegetables something like that and sometimes even if they are good with the no um, particularly that uh, colostrum type of thing so i'll suggest them to go with that if they are not uh, ready for that then uh, we can go with the kshirabala um, or even mahanarayana to some extent which will also suppress the condition i don't say that they will replace the vitamin b but they'll try to suppress the condition developed due to that question to ragaram sir like yeah. there is this swapa you explained somebody had explained like a mixture is 
you know numbness with muscle stiffness mm. and there is also other term called as a stymitya so stymitya is a different condition stymitya is a condition where a person feels as if uh, the body has been wrapped with a wet cloth a feeling as if something is enveloping stimita so that is uh, that is a condition it it can be so it it's i think it's a predominantly a kapha predominant uh, condition uh, stimitya so there uh, if if it is it cannot be exactly equated to swapa so there the feeling itself is totally different there is a there is a sort of heaviness there is a sort of something being covered just we can imagine or we can try a thick cloth Uh, or something for which is dipped in water just try to wrap wrap around the cloth our body and sit or a particular part of the body and sit for some time so that gives a different feel rather than uh, in comparison to uh, not having any feeling at all or not having any sensation at all so both are different conditions any specific strategy because stiffness is explained i, I we have clearly understood that this is different than you know yes. this is different entirely different than the numbness any quick way to decrease muscle stiffness probably abhyanga with sweda is the right strategy sir definitely that is the one which can be done and which gives very clearly acharya charaka has also suggested even the wooden lag if it is given continuously is near and so that it can also be made to bend so that the stiffness or the tightness can be reduced by using the uh, abhyanga and um, swedana and that is the right way to do it absolutely as uh, as guru ji has said vata vata itself should be seen so in stiffness also stiffness is a different condition from swapa so again uh, when dealing this condition also we need to see what is causing stiffness is a theory again uh if we see stiff, uh, stiffness stiffness uh, muscle stiffness muscle is a matruja avayava so that is a maternal uh, organ we can call it as it is a soft organ which is predominantly uh, made up of kapha so again kapha has a ashraya ashraya bhava with uh, the muscle so any variations happening in the muscle stiffness it should be an imbalance between vata and kapha there and we sh- when we see kapha is made up of prithvi and jala so that is uh, earth and water element kapha the balance between earth and water element is very important in the muscles that can be uh, put into imbalance by vata because vata is ruksha in nature number 1 totally antagonistic to the muscle tissue or the mamsa dhatu it is having the ruksha guna and other gunas which can deteriorate the muscle or can make it stiff and very importantly when we say vata is antagonistic to kapha which is residing in the muscle so muscle is the ashraya for kapha and vata is antagonistic to or opposite to kapha in in terms of all its qualities now when we see the muscle uh, made up of kapha we will forget muscle and look at kapha which is then make up of uh, mamsa dhatu and kapha is made up of uh, prithvi and jala so that is earth and water elements we will consider it as a concrete like cement mixture there is an imbalance between prithvi and jala components if prithvi gets more than jala if earth element gets more than jala when it can happen when there is vata vruddhi when there is water vruddhi it can squeeze off all the water component from kapha and the prithvi component will be left over the hard component will be left over this also pertains to the dehydration of the muscles stiffness can also be a symptom of dehydration of the muscles we need to hydrate the patient very importantly we need to see if hydration is required even our shadanga pani and other uh, methods of preparing uh, herbal water if we can give as or if some other supplementation salt supplementation is needed that we need to see so here very very importantly we need to see if we are going into the stiffness theory i am telling uh, number 1 in this condition hydration should be maintained number 1 number 2 vata should be brought into balance mamsa gata vata mamsa gata vata when vata goes inside the mamsa and creates havoc there vata gets predominant and kapha gets less and mamsa gets the prithvi amsha will increase and the muscle will get stiffness what is needed snehana swedana so like uh, application of oil and also giving some sudation methods will take care of it so when we go to the other context of uh, stabdata or the stiffness stabdata is a word which we can stamba or stabda is a word which we can use for uh, stiffness in this particular condition we have a condition called as uru stamba we have a condition called as Uru Stamba, a specific condition explained in Ayurveda where Panchakarma measures are contraindicated. So that is a big topic to discuss. We will catch hold of that word Stamba here. Okay. Sasleshma Medha Pavanaha. In the Samprapti it is said Sasleshma Medha Pavanaha. Sleshma Medha Pavana. Vata is the main culprit here. So not the culprit. So it is the main uh, first maker here. Vata along with Medha, Kapha and 
other dosha that is pitta so here there is kapha pitta meda all these things going and assembling in the thigh this pathology can happen anywhere for acharyas have observed that in the uru at that particular time it, i think it was more prevalent at that time in this condition what we can see is apart from vata the pathogenic factors are meda kapha and pitta so there is a typical approach for this particular condition this stabdata can should be handled on the lines of uru stamba chikitsa only so because we are not only looking at vata we are looking at the opposite factors that is kapha is there meda is there and also pitta is there so in such conditions the it, it shall be dealt in a different way and then stamba is a symptom of vata vyadi so we have symptoms uh, diseases like griva stamba manya stamba all these conditions wherein vata has increased again the dehydration process or whatever we can take there is stabdata here yeah. and manya stamba griva stamba are also vata nanatmaja roga such means the diseases caused by predominance of only vata so they are included into that uru stamba by the way it is a separate disease entity and also it is a vata nanatmaja disease so here stamba should be taken as a sign of vata prakopa and vata should be handled accordingly so again as i was telling so different scenarios different conditions we need to look at and coming to other condition called as ama vata we need to look at ama ama also ama is also causing stabdata in ama vata the stabdata is mainly because of two factors ama and vata both so here relieving ama initially and then vata nilomana chikitsa and going according to the treatment plan of uh, ama vata i think uh, that is uh, a very important uh, uh, approach there and coming to the kapha the stabdata has not been mentioned stabdata or stamba has not at all been mentioned in the nanatmaja rogas of kapha but they have been mentioned in the nanatmaja rogas of vata but in kapha nanatmaja vikaras or kapha nanatmaja rogas there are some terms very important terms used here or in kapha prakopa lakshanas in fact in kapha prakopa lakshanas we can see kartenya gaurava taimitya the question we were discussing about shofa and upalepa look at this words very carefully kartenya hardness pertaining to stiffness again stabda is not used here this is a different type of stabdata where there is kartenya okay extreme predominance of prithvi mahabhuta here gaurava heaviness again prithvi staimitya again both water and earth components are disturbed shofa is there there is a swelling there upalepa feeling of something being coated a sister concern of staimitya so when we see these things we are missing the word uh, stabdata or stamba in uh, kapha nanatmaja rogas but in kapha prakopa lakshanas these terms the mixture of these conditions also will pertain to the stiffness because the patient will not be able to differentiate between stiffness or staimitya and all those conditions it is our responsibility as doctors to look at these conditions in uh, different perspectives so here vata should be looked at kapha should be looked at ama should be looked at and a pathology similar to uru stamba shall be looked at while dealing with the stabdata very importantly if hydration is needed what is the imbalance between prithvi and jala components so seeing it from different perspectives the main strategy will be tackling vata itself at the end of the day vata will will be there the pulling and pushing as in uru stamba is the vata which is drawing these elements into the thigh it will be ultimately at some stage we need to tackle with vata but we need to see the association of kapha or ama or pitta and the imbalance between the prithvi and uh, jala components of the muscle so when we when we look at the muscle stiffness in from these uh, directions i think uh, the approaches can be made in different ways ama treat it on the lines of ama vata uru stamba like condition on the lines of uru stamba vata predominant on the lines of vata kapha predominant on the lines of kapha chikitsa so the selection of medicines also will be according to that and according to the disease which is causing the stabda so this is uh, uh, my opinion on a different perspective of stabdata or stiffness and what is ayurvedic solution to reaction to cold temperature person gets allergic reaction dry pigmented skin and shorter breathing or any cold exposure sometimes unavoidable despite other adequate clothing uh, your initial thoughts on this please raga gurraja sir okay, whenever a patient complains of these type of things definitely he has a reactive airway what we can say and he has a allergy which is very close to the comparison of what ayurveda has said as a sheetapitta so whenever there is a 
person getting a reaction to cold temperature and as well as sneezing and allergic reactions and short enough breathing and all those things we can correlate it to sheetha pitta and in sheetha pitta best drug of choice would be your haridra as well as khadira these two things will definitely go in hand in hand and of course depending upon the age of the person and depending upon the other comorbidities present we can select and make a combination whether broth aridra content khadira rista can be given or haridra directly given in the form of um, golden milk or something like that we can opt for other options of course there are many of the preparations available in the market like tablet instantin is there then there are other options also so we can use them accordingly and here our total intention would be to enhance or upgrade the responsive nature of the body to external cold temperature uh, if we could able to achieve over a period of time then later that person should be given some rasayans like chavana prasha continuously to for the 3 months or 6 months or something like that so if it is done automatically the person's nature of responding to this cold temperature or even getting allergy to the cold will slowly go off this haridra kanda especially is useful both uh, for nasal allergy also for respiratory allergy so it is specifically told for skin related allergy the thing is whenever uh, we develop from a no single uh, cell to the multi cell organ i mean um, person during that entire journey of fetal development the germinal layer from the universal one you have a first germinal layer from which the skin and the respiratory system develop that's from the same germinal layer because of that proximity of uh, getting from the same germinal layer we used to develop uh, allergy which is very clearly from the respiratory and maybe it may be in one's uh, skin if it is get a uh, allergic reaction showing by skin then if you suppress those things sometime it may develop once as a reactive uh, allergic nature in respiratory system and vice versa so depending upon those conditions the thing is that the been expressed or done with the nature of a similar type of doshic imbalances it may be in skin or it may be in the uh, respiratory system that's the reason brahmaridra kanda is a beautiful combination along with kadirarista if it is a respiratory system then we can say along with brahmaridra kanda we can go for vasakarista and if it is uh, for the skin condition then we can go for the brahmaridra kanda with kadirarista that's the usual combination which we usually make it it may be for the respiratory or um, skin conditions associated with allergy so intolerance to cold or heat shall be uh, looked in the perspective of immunity itself okay so there may there may be uh, see our entire system is made up of either cold elements or uh, hot elements like vata and kapha they are managing the cold principles and pitta is uh, managing the hot principles so we should be sufficiently tolerant to these things if there is a continuous intolerance to cold or uh, heat immunity should be immunity should be thought of and very important in this particular condition the thyroid levels shall be evaluated thyroid levels also shall be evaluated because uh, we know uh, in hyper and hypothyroidism there will be uh, intolerance severe intolerance to heat and uh, cold respectively so thyroid evaluation uh, should be done if the thyroid is evaluated we can treat accordingly also so by translating it into ayurveda so if nothing is working out but rasayanas are the main stays here for the tolerance rasayanas are the main stays if uh, there is prabhuta dosha they shall be eliminated through the shodhana prakriyas and of course uh, big list of medicines uh, uh, suggested by guruja sir and uh, rasayanas yes and the thyroid shall be evaluated in this condition so and treated accordingly immunity plays a very important role here uh, uh, thank you sir and uh, uh, there was another another case which was presented this is complaint is of post menopause menopausal lady facing sluggish bowel and stiffness in the knee joints in the morning on and off palpitation takes normal cesarean food healthy meal fruits etc so health blood results normal does yoga and pranayama daily and swimming four days a week and body and active lifestyle so main complaints are sluggish bowel stiffness in the knee joints in the morning and on and off palpitation post menopause what would be your way of thinking when a patient complains of this sir so whenever a complaint of this nature the post menopause woman if to time it is due to the hormones variation which is very natural inevitable and i would suggest to go for a cleansing once and if it is properly cleansed automatically 
the, she will feel comfortable once to some level. Then the stiffness in the knee joints and all those things will go off. Secondly, and this is the Prithitatva in the bone, as uh, once she is in a menopausal stage, slowly her uh, hormone levels go down and uh, she started losing her um, bones, even though she is active and all those things, Vata sets in. So we need to go for the Abhyanga, a regular Abhyanga for that. If a regular Abhyanga is done and sufficient, Grutapana as well as and some sort of counseling also plays a role regarding that palpitation and all those things that is because of the hormonal changes it's happening. She needs to be counseled for this thing. This is very natural. Everybody has to pass through this situation. So don't worry. That's the one thing. But second thing, to be any woman of this nature, this age, particularly in the post-COVID era, if she complains of these type of things, better go for a cardiac evaluation once to, to be on safer side. Because we don't know exactly what things going on and what the kitchen cooking up inside. So you need to be very careful in handling those type of things. And sluggish bowel can be very easily with the trifula churna or even simple laxatives, or niyama churna or maybe even the sonamaki churna can be used to clear the things. And once that is done, automatically the knee joint stiffness will go off to some extent. And still if it is there, then check out for any osteoporotic changes or osteoarthritic changes may be occurring. Accordingly, dealt it. Maybe gandhataila can be used for this condition to improve the bone strength or even apply abhyangam in using oil like Dhanvantaram or even the Balash Yaganda Taila or even Mahanarayana Taila and if this is a pain is there associated with that you can use Karpura Taila like that depending upon those conditions. Then try to give such a drugs which can reduce her imbalances of hormones maybe like some sort of uh, some dose of uh, Shatavari, Ashoka and combination of uh, Vidari and these things if it is in a combination of the appropriate combination if it is given definitely it will somewhat settle down. Even ST Madhu can be one of the important choice here. Cycles, uh, menstrual cycles are mainly managed by Vata as we know. So here, uh, looking at the symptoms uh, given in this particular case, everything seems to be like uh, high Vata and uh, less of Kapha symptoms. So ideally, Vata should be balanced here. So we can see sluggish bowel and uh, stiffness in joints. So mainly due to Vata, again, Apana Vata should be balanced. So we should see the Avarna also if there is Avarna of Vata and palpitations is a combination of Vata increase and Kapha decrease. Obviously, everywhere Rudrava, there is palpitation is a sign of Kapha Kshaya. Again, palpitation is a sign of Kapha Kshaya. Kapha Kshaya happens due to hyperactivity of Vata again. So again, all Vata balancing uh, foods, medicines if need, needed and also Bayat Parimardana Chikitsa like Abhyanga, Dara uh, and also the stress management is very important in this particular condition. I, I prefer uh, going with Tiktak Shira Bastis. Tiktak Shira Bastis if uh, there are severe bone and uh, joint related problems already set in in the pre or the menopausal period. Uh, so this Bastis will definitely help uh, to combat osteopenia or osteoporosis. If there is osteopenia, we can just prevent uh, that from going to osteoporosis. Some rasayanas also will come in, come in handy. Mainly Vatahara treatments uh, should be uh, carefully administered after a thorough evaluation. Very important is thorough evaluation of uh, uh, the patient. So whatever is there, we need to go with water balancing uh, measures itself. So that is the idea thing. There's a question on lichen planus treatment. It requires more of a detailed evaluation. We will take up in the next class uh, my words of gratitude to guraja sir and also raghavan sir thank you sir please subscribe to our uh, you know weekly classes uh, so that you start learning ayurveda okay all namaste